Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Fractal Gardens. Today, we're going to be talking about an extremely important but often neglected topic in the care of mango trees, which is interpreting electrical conductivity and applying that to make sure your trees are as healthy as possible. This is the quick background on electrical conductivity, what it is, how we interpret it, and what it can tell us about our mango trees. Electrical conductivity is essentially a measurement in the soil which we take with special devices that lets us figure out what is the amount of electrical charge which can pass over a given length within the soil. In other terms, it's a measurement of everything in the soil that is soluble within the water that transfers nutrients to your plants. In other terms, the higher the electrical conductivity of your soil, the more things you have in your soil besides water, which readily dissolve and can either cause good or bad things to happen when uptaken by your plants. Now these, uh, these dissolved solids, as they're called, include things like fertilizer, uh, various salts, and then again, anything else which is soluble within the soil matrix and adds to the uh, electrical charge potential of your soil. Now, as this applies to mangoes, we understand that mangoes are relative to other plants like apples, much, much, much more uh, salt sensitive and also much more sensitive to high values for electrical conductivity. In the threshold of about 10 times more sensitive from what I've seen compared to many other types of fruit trees. In other words, mangoes do not tolerate many dissolved solids or a buildup of salts or substantial amounts of fertilizers relative to other fruit trees. It is very, very easy to cause things like we see on a couple of these leaves here with the brown tip burn and some yellowing, which are indications of micronutrient issues because of what is called, again, the electrical conductivity of your mango tree. Now, as mentioned, mangoes are about 10 times more sensitive in this measurement than most other types of plants, at least as far as I've seen other types of fruiting trees. Apples have a reputation, for example, of being able to tolerate very poor soil, soil which might have high concentrations of salts and thus a high uh, electrical conductivity rating. So how do we fix this if our soil has too much uh, conduction? What can we do? Well, step number one would be to go ahead and measure the electrical conductivity of your soil. The best way to do that is to get a probe. Uh, you can find these on Amazon. They are pretty costly compared to other instruments. They can cost somewhere between $50 to $200. I was able to find a really good deal on mine to make it more affordable. But if that's not an option, I believe there are also some soil tests that you can take separately that might be a little bit cheaper and a little bit more involved, but I'm not as familiar with those. For my purposes, I simply use a probe. When it comes to mangoes, we want the electrical conductivity 
to be less than a reading of 0.2. That I believe DF. is um, MDS, or actually, excuse me, MS over CM. So that is the measurement for, again, the electrical conductivity. Or how much With a tool like this, you can check and see what is the electrical conductivity rating. And yeah, as mentioned, if it's under 0.2, it's good. That bottom number there is the soil temperature. So let me change that here. So right now you guys can see the soil temperature is good. The electrical conductivity rating is good. And yes, it will vary from place to place. So make sure you measure more than one place. Now, what happens again, uh, if this gets out of control, your plants can actually die. If it's really bad. At the very least, it causes this unsightly, unseemly uh, tip burn. These brown leaf edges. The leaves themselves are still productive, but the edges are all burnt and ugly. What are the causes for this? One of the major causes for a high electrical conductivity rating which is related again to high salt concentrations in your soil is the over application of fertilizer. Simply by adding too much fertilizer, you will cause a lot of plants to burn. Another way that you get a high value for the electrical conductivity rating is by using water which has impurities in it, which uh, leads us to this next part of the video where we will. All right, we're gonna go ahead and now measure the electrical conductivity rating of the distilled water on the right, the hose water, or the city water in the middle, and the city water with fertilizer added on the uh, left over there. So first, distilled water. Ah, we see it's very, very low. So 0 0.03 is the measurement for distilled water. We'll talk about that in just a second. Hose water. The rating is point I think that's 46 or 96 or yeah, it says 48 which is much, much higher. And then hose water with fertilizer added, we see it's even higher, right? It's 0 0.5, 0 0.5, or it depends on where I'm in the water here, going all the way up to 0 0.7. So yeah, we can see quite a difference, a substantial difference of about 1% between distilled water and hose water with fertilizer added. So what that means is that if you're trying to feed mango trees in hose water or city water, you might have a concentration of dissolved solids which is too high and will build up in your soil too quickly to be able to support your mango trees without giving them the tip burn and causing other issues that we see quite frequently. Fertilizer added, of course, will increase the amount of salts. So really what you want to think about is ways of reducing that, which the best way is by using distilled water here or water which does not have any other uh, solids except for simply pure, um, H2O and that's exactly what you get without anything else if I were to add fertilizer straight to the, uh, excuse me straight to the distilled water 
this would be the purest and lowest way, or this would be the lowest salt concentration that we would see of all of these three options here. And that would make uh, distilled water the preferred choice for mango trees and other fruit trees as a means of watering your plants. Now with that said, I really don't have salt issues on any of my plants by using hose water. Really the only one, and yeah, I do see some salt burn on some of these, but that's an unrelated issue having to do with over fertilizing versus the hose water versus the mango tree here. And only this mango tree, not even these other ones really nearly as much, but specifically the mature mango tree, which is the least salt tolerant of any of these fruit trees, which I carry around here. So what I would recommend very, very highly is that you test your hose water on your plants, test it on your mango trees, as it is, of course, a lot more convenient and uh, economic to be able to just use your hose or faucet water versus specially buying uh, distilled water to treat your plants. So go ahead and test it first. If it doesn't hold enough weight, if it causes tip burn or other issues to your plants, add some distilled water in there. And maybe you don't have to go 100% distilled water but by lowering it a little bit, you will add a lot of health back to your plants. And so even though the EC rating's pretty low in here, I have been feeding this mango tree nothing but city water. And that's been good enough to give me a lot of mango fruits, which uh, look pretty healthy to me. But I think uh, this tree can do a little bit better. So I'm gonna start adding a little bit of distilled water in there and keep you guys updated. I've done a lot of amending of the soil, which is kind of silly because this tree is doing all right. But I'm kind of a perfectionist, so I'm really trying to figure out how we can optimize the long-term growing of mangoes in containers for years to indefinite periods of time. That's really my focus of study right now and experimentation. So I am doing a couple of different things right now in terms of making different soil mixes, adding soil amendments, taking complex measurements of soil properties to try to come up with the perfect potting mix for mangoes for indefinite periods of time for uh, long-term optimization and fruit production of mango trees. So I do find out more things every single day. I am not the expert of everything, but I try to become more expert at everything every single day. So if anything, you guys can always expect for me to be able uh, to continue to be passionate about learning to do better at anything I'm doing with my yard, with my garden. So I'm a passionate researcher, not just for gardening, but for other things as well. And that's just an aspect of my personality, which uh, I try to implement into what we're doing here with Fractal Gardens. So I hope, um, this conversation on the electrical conductivity of mangoes, what that measurement means, and what good it can do for your trees will be helpful for you. So right here, right, we're seeing signs here with this yellowing of not just the tip burn, but maybe some micronutrient deficiencies, which are actual, or yeah, I cannot speak, actually more related to a, uh, pH issue which I've corrected than anything else but the salt issue is also something I have to keep an eye on because as mentioned 
I have been giving these trees and this mango tree a lot of city water. Although on my other trees, and as mentioned, the younger trees, which are a little bit uh, more salt or less salt sensitive, they seem to do a lot better than this mature mango tree, which is bearing fruit with um, the city water. So just something to keep in mind, right? You don't want to waste uh, city water or excuse me, you don't want to waste the stilled water on your young trees if they can tolerate the city water. So maybe think about testing it as mentioned and uh, only getting special water for your special trees. But this tree right here is a special tree. Yeah, this um, tip burn's been under control for months, hasn't really spread. A lot of these leaves are still in perfect shape. But we can do better, right? And um, that's the kind of service and the kind of wisdom that we wish to uh, provide to our customers. So these fruits, yeah, they're getting bigger. They look like maybe, hopefully about half of what's remaining hold. So we have nine. Hopefully I get four or five. If I get even one, I'll be... Um, uh, super happy about that since this is the first season I will have successfully or will have successfully grown mangoes in Tucson Fallen over myself and all my plants here Other cool stuff going on in the yard today uh, Strawberry guava some of it is blooming Some of it's kind of struggling in the heat a little so we'll see what happens. We got a lot of new growth popping out on all of these plants sprayed with the uh, surround or W, I cannot get the name right, surround WP. <laughs> I should know that. Here we got this kyphor lime putting on a lot of good new growth. These apples, this apple tree is quite young, so it's kind of struggling to hold and support these fruit, but it's doing all right. Got a blooming uh, melon over here, ponderosa lemon pushing out new foliage and uh, and blooms out here in the 100 degree weather. Got my Barbados cherry is prolifically putting on blooms. So right now it has a lot of cherries, but I will expect more for many, many months. New growth on my lime, papaya, everything's growing around here. Um, kind of curious about this passion fruit. I did a lot of hand pollinating, but I'm not seeing a lot of passion fruit. So maybe that takes some time. Not sure it's my first year growing it. So we'll have to just wait and update you later. Got a white sapote here. Really putting on a lot of good growth. Looks very healthy. Seems to do a lot better. Um, high potassium, lower amounts of nitrogen, at least while it's fruiting. And then here, got these grapes, which are really starting to come along, very healthy plants. <clears throat> Move this banana over here. Got um, lime quats up the wazoo. And this is what I'm really excited about here. These summer delight apriums we have uh, a good number, about 15 to 20 of them. I hope the birds can't see them now that they're changing colors, but if they can, I will try to pick them first. So hopefully I get there first. But yeah, those are pretty fruit. Got a lot of growth everywhere, right? So these figs are um, putting on size quite uh, prolific on their Brabra crop. We've got new growth and all of these things down here. I wonder about these late peaches, if they will get larger, if they'll fall. Got these peaches that came from earlier, which are getting there. We've got guava flower. So I expect some guava 
in, uh, in fall. Got pomegranates. We've got pear. See, everything's popping here in um, fractal gardens. Uh, some of these guys need to be replanted, but hey, um, uh, pumpkins shooting back to life. Corn is really doing well, can take the heat like a champ. Um, melons coming along. So I'll keep you guys posted.